Well, thank you, Harry, and thank you, everyone, particularly for being here on this great occasion. Um, Mayor Riley and Bishop Harry, um, I'd like to recognize our city council members who were here, Council Member Bill Moody and uh, Council Member Keith Waring, who actually made the motion at city council, which was unanimously approved, uh, to rename the park the Joe Riley Park. Council Member Robert Mitchell is with us, and my mayor pro tem, James Lewis, along with former city council members Kathleen Wilson and Deb Morinelli, and uh, I saw Yvonne Evans here, and there may be others, but I didn't see them. Um, but no one else is raising their hand. So thank you all for being with us, and thank you for your support and helping make this happen. And thanks to the incredible city staff. Uh, Mayor Riley knows it takes the staff to make uh, good things happen with the city of Charleston. I see Jason Kronsberg, but many, many others uh, um, are here, and we're a part of uh, this incredible effort. I met uh, Stu Dawson with Sasaki and Associates, who originally designed the park uh, with Mayor Riley's help, and uh, his son, Mark uh, Dawson, helped to... Uh, uh, bring forward these improvements that we dedicate today. And, and thanks to Wildwood Landscaping, uh, Jerry Crosby and his company for the work they did to make it happen. Um, again, I'll acknowledge the Lowe family and their gen generosity and Dan Batista who works with them and your partnership with the city to extend this incredible park northward for a, for a new uh, a new rendition, of extension of this park that's going to be add to the public realm and will be wonderful. Thank, yeah. And uh, thanks to Capered Bar, who, who I think was head of fundraising when this first came together, and um, and to David Rawl, uh, they've been dedicated, uh, dear friends of the mayor's, but. Um, dedicated dear friends of the city of Charleston. So uh, thank you, David and um, Capers. And to Harry, and we got the Coast Guard joining in. Harry and the Charleston Parks Conservancy, it's a true partnership with the city. And um, in addition to the many downtown parks, we're getting ready to go west, young man, and work on the West Ashley Bikeway and Greenway and other parks as well. So uh, thank you for that. So my primary job today was to order the weather. How'd I do? Yeah, I did pretty well. Okay. So um, I kind of learned as as mayor, you you kind of also serve as the chief meteorologist of the city. I've I've gotten blessing from Rob Fowler and Bill Walsh, Walsh. But most importantly, about uh, just two weeks after I was sworn in, it was February a few years ago and I was walking down Broad Street and I ran into Mayor Riley. And uh, he says, Mayor, it was a day like today, even in February, it was a beautiful warm day. And he said, Mayor, thank you for the beautiful weather. And he saw from the uh, expression on my face that I was a little perplexed. And he said, well, look, when anything bad happens, you're gonna get blamed for it, whether you had anything to do with it or not. So take credit for what, what good that happened. So. So there you go. Thank you for that advice. That being said, I did not welcome Matthew or Irma to Charleston. Okay, I just want to make that clear. Um, which reminds me of one of my favorite moments in the presence of uh, Mayor Joseph P. Riley Jr. And that was in October of 1989, just a couple of blocks from here after Hurricane Hugo had devastated our city and our region. And I don't, how many of y'all were here for Hurricane Hugo? You remember, um, it was more, so much more than a Matthew or Irma. It, it was like living in a third world country here for a while. And uh, FEMA didn't show up for some time and um, we were kind of on our own other than the leadership of this great man. And after we'd all been struggling and working so hard and just, um, just at it and at it, Mayor Riley decided, let's, let's have a pause. Let's, let's get together. And, and the symphony came. 
and they played this wonderful music you were just hearing a uh, beginning of, of Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for a Common Man. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was one of the most powerful experiences I remember in my lifetime because we had this feeling of unity and that we had made it through this this tragedy, this catastrophe, and we knew the the future was going to be bright. And Joe, it was your leadership that brought us through that. It was just a remarkable time and a powerful time. So um, y'all are probably familiar with this uh, fanfare for Common Man. It's uh, You heard just a few strains of it. And it's a beautiful, incredible music of Aaron Copeland. And interspersed with it are the wonderful historic words of our late President Abraham Lincoln. Today I will share with you some words of our Mayor Joseph P. Riley. And this is what he said. And we give this place more especially to those who need it most. To those our brothers and sisters they will be now and for hundreds of years hence, for whom the burdens of life and its passages are most difficult to bear. And whether burdens of body or mind or station or lack of means, those who most need a place of restful beauty in their city as their life's companion, it is to them and to all, we give this park, a park that will lift the spirit and the light and light the mind, warm the heart, and touch the soul. And those words are among the words before us today that are inscribed in stone. And today we rededicate this park in honor of you, Mayor Riley, but we rededicate it by giving it to those, our brothers and sisters, our citizens, that you mentioned so eloquently years ago. Civilization and civic design. And this is what the mayor said. Builders of great cities, we all must be. And we must build with great care and beauty for the lasting mark of a civilization is the city. It is the evidence of what we were, reflective of our stewardship of the land we inherited and our gift to those who follow. And it is in the public realm of our cities that we must work with special care, the places where citizens come together, the spaces each person can call his own, their own our streets, our alleys, our sidewalks, our public buildings, our downtowns, but especially our parks. Now, I would add, add um, our West Ashley and our islands, James, Johns, and Daniel Island. Um, what Mayor Riley realized shortly after becoming mayor was, and maybe he knew this beforehand, was the incredible importance of civic design. And in fact, Mayor Riley created 32 years ago in 1986 with the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the Mayor's Institute of Civic, civic Design, which is an ongoing institute that the conference holds twice a year, once a year here in Charleston. And in fact, we met just weeks ago mayors from around the country to study the work of Charleston and of Mayor Riley and, and furthering that concept of the importance of public spaces and parks in our cities. And that's why when I go so gladly to the U.S. Conference of Mayors meeting that everyone, you, you think since becoming mayor, just being around Charleston, that there was this uh, perception of, you know, following, filling the shoes of such a great leader. Boy, do I get it when I go to the U.S. Conference of Mayors. 
I mean, mayors all over the country look up to Mayor Riley. He is known as the Dean of U.S. Mayors, which did cause me to go look that word up, is derived bishop from decanus, a Latin word for the head monk of a monastery. This, they came up with this during the Middle Ages, okay? And he was the monk who was in charge of the monks who were in charge of the other monks. Just as Mayor Riley was a leader and such an inspiration to mayors who were leaders of their own cities around the country. The beautiful nature here, this is what the mayor said. For through the water and through the water's edge, we bring the great beauty of nature into our city. The water, this harbor, is an ever-changing work of art. The infinite combination of color, reflection, strong winds, gentle breezes, tides and currents, the golden rising sun, the red globe of sunset, the light of the moon, the sprinkle of the stars, the boats and ships and storms and birds and schooling fish and so much more. Each hour on the water is different, no day the same, ever changing and always beautiful. The beauty of nature is an inspiration to us all, uplifting us, leads us to the sublime, to the spiritual. And this is what the mayor said. Our prayers and our search for the meaning of life occurs within us while in our houses of worship and in other places as well. When confronted with the extraordinary beauty in nature, as we do at places like this, our mind is in wonder at the handiwork of our Creator, and we may try harder to understand and do His will. For many, this park will become a cathedral of the stars, a chapel of the wind, a temple of the sun, and a church of the sky. Beautiful words, Mayor Riley. Now inscribed. Now inscribed for our citizens for ages to come. And folks, I, I, I believe what we have here in this epitome of civic design that we have before us in this park and the beauty of nature that is right beside us is a, a juxtaposition, a junction, an intersection, a confluence of civilization and nature, which, as Mayor Riley said, leads to inspiration and maybe even the true meaning of life. So to our everyday citizens, men and women, children, and we've got the fountain temporarily cut off, I guess, because of the sound. But I also remember when we dedicated the park uh, back in 1990, the joy when Mayor Riley announced that the fountain would be okay for kids to play in. <laughs> Whereas Waterfront Park, a timeless and welcoming space created with the utmost care, is perhaps the clearest representation of Mayor Riley's enduring legacy and contributions to the city of Charleston and its citizens, and whereas there is no more fitting venue to bear his name than this waterfront park, a public treasure now fundamentally embedded in the spirit of Charleston, and whereas this space will forever serve as a gift to Charleston residents of the present and the future, representing the excellence and the dignity of the man who brought it to be. Now, therefore, I, John J. Tecklenburg, Mayor of the City of Charleston, on behalf of our City Council and our citizens, do hereby rededicate Waterfront Park as the Joe Riley Waterfront Park. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor.